look at the justifiable use of force in Illinois. And we're going to do two things. First of all, we're going to look at what the law says in three different instances of uh, whether or not you're justified in the use of uh, deadly force. The second thing I want to do, though, is look at the practicality, because there's the letter of the law, and we're going to look exactly where that is for Illinois statutes, but then there's the interpretation of the law. Um, the letter of the law doesn't mean anything if the, the courts routinely interpret it in a way differently than you would read those letters of the law. So very important that we distinguish between what the law actually says and how it's commonly and routinely interpreted. There are laws in Illinois and probably every other state that are just not really followed anymore uh, by courts because they've decided through different interpretations to get looser and looser. They don't even follow them anymore. And technically, they are breaking the law. Uh, well, not technically at all. They are breaking the law. They're not enforcing the law. They're not interpreting the law as written. But um, that's the way it is. So you can either protest about it or you can realize that this is the reality and we're living in a world that you have to deal with reality. So justifiable use of force, where do I find that? Well, it's on the internet. You can search for the Illinois Compiled Statutes, ILCS. And uh, Illinois Compiled Statutes have got statutes about everything. 720 is uh, the criminal code. And uh, what we want to do is look at 720 ILCS, Article 7, which specifically outlines justifiable use of force. And there are three separate uh, ways that they, they break this down. The first is, when are you justified in using force in defense of a person? And then a dwelling, and then other property. So let's look at a person, first of all. And the way it's worded is that there are two separate uh, delineations here. One is use of force. The second is use of deadly force. So the, it says that um, in Article 7, a person is justified in the use of force against another when and to the extent that he reasonably believes that such conduct is necessary to defend himself or another against such other's imminent use of unlawful force. So you're only uh, allowed to use force against someone else if they are using force uh, against you unlawfully, and it's got to be a reasonable belief. Now, it goes on in the second sentence to say, however, he is justified in the use of force which is intended or likely to cause death or great bodily harm. In other words, he's justified in deadly force only if he reasonably believes that such force is necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm to himself or another or the commission of a forcible felony. So, uh, if I reasonably believe that I have to use deadly force so that I am uh, going to prevent my own imminent death or great bodily uh, harm or that of someone else. Uh, in other words, if a 95-year-old grandmother with no arms uh, is chasing me in her wheelchair that she operates through a control in her mouth, that's not reasonable to believe that she's going to do uh, she's going to kill me or you know, do great bodily harm. So clearly you have got to have <clears throat> some sort of uh, reasonable belief that you're in danger or a great threat. Um, or the commission of a forcible felony. Now this is where it gets interesting and where we start talking about the letter of the law versus how it's normally applied. According to 720 ILCS 5 slash 28, forcible felony means treason, <laughs> First degree murder, second degree murder, predatory criminal sexual assault of a child, aggravated criminal sexual assault, criminal sexual assault, robbery, burglary, residential burglary, aggravated arson, arson, aggravated kidnapping, kidnapping, aggravated ba battery resulting in great bodily harm or permanent disability or disfigurement, or any other felony which involves the use or threat of physical force or violence against any individual. So, wow, that... It's pretty all-encompassing with all those different, uh, they list all those different crimes. And then it says, basically, uh, it says um, any other felony which involves the use or threat of physical force or violence against any individual. So if someone is spitting at you, um, you know, or calling you names, that's not a felony. But it, if it's a felony. So that's very interesting. So if they break into my house, that's a burglary. Uh, in a residential burglary if it's my house. So I would be justified in killing them, um, 
even if they are not a threat to my personal harm or life. Hmm, I wonder about that. That's what the letter of the law says. Justified in the use of force, which is intended or likely to cause death or great bodily harm, only if he reasonably believes that such force is necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm to himself or another, or the commission of a forcible felony. So now, if the 85-year-old grandmother with no arms uh, in a wheelchair breaks into my house to steal my television, uh, she's using force uh, to break in, hmm, and that's a residential burglary, so I could shoot her. Good luck with that. <laughs> Hopefully nobody would ever use deadly force to, uh, to shoot somebody for stealing their property. Property can be replaced. But this is an interesting thing because this is what the letter of the law says, and good luck with that. Because what happens is your life is really in the hands of the police officer that responds and the prosecutor that makes the decision whether or not to press charges. Because if they don't arrest you, you're home free. If the prosecutor says, I don't think I can win this, you're home free. But if they do decide to arrest you and they do decide to press charges, you've already lost, whether you won or not. Because now you've got to get a lawyer. You're going to bankrupt yourself. You've got to bail out because they're probably going to have a big old bail to, you know, to, to, to keep you in jail. So you've got to come up with that money, the lawyer, pain and suffering emotionally of going through the legal system. So now we're looking at, well, what does the letter of the law says when I can use deadly force in defense of my person uh, versus when should I and when is the, the cost benefit going to be there? I don't see a benefit in killing somebody who's going to commit a forcible felony against me. Uh, because number one, I'll see that dead person in my mind's eye for the rest of my life, no matter how much of a scumbag they are. And number two, if even if I had no moral issues with it, think about everything that's going to be happening to me legally, depending upon the police and prosecutor. Now, the first thing in 720 ILCS, Article 7, is use of force in defense of a person. The second one is use of force in defense of a dwelling. Now we're going to get back to this whole burglary thing. A person is justified in the use of force against another when and to the extent that he reasonably believes that such conduct is necessary to prevent or terminate such other's unlawful entry into or attack upon a dwelling. So I can use force if I need to. Uh, I reasonably believe that I need to use force to stop them from entering or attacking my dwelling. Attacking. Ooh. However, he is justified in the use of force, deadly force, force which is intended or likely to cause death or great bodily harm only if, one, the entry into my house or dwelling is made or attempted in a violent, riotous, or tumultuous manner, and he reasonably believes that such force is necessary to prevent an assault upon or offer of personal violence to him or another then in the dwelling. So if you break into my house, not if I invite you in, but if you break into my house and you're assaulting or offering personal violence to me or someone else in the house, that's the first condition by which I can use deadly force. Or two, he reasonably believes that such force is necessary to prevent the commission of a felony in the dwelling. So now that's, again, the letter of the law says he's going to break in and he's breaking into my house saying, I'm going to steal your TV. I'm going to steal your TV. And he goes for my TV. I don't feel like he's threatening me, but according to this, I reasonably believe that, that if I don't use deadly force to stop him, he's going to commit a felony, residential burglary, in my dwelling. Good luck with that. So, and then third, we have the same thing. Use of force in defense of another person's property. And that says that you're justified in the use of deadly force if you reasonably believe that such force is necessary to prevent the commission of a forcible felony uh, with respect to your real property, other than, uh, other than a dwelling, because we've already talked about a dwelling, like a car or something, or personal property, that's lawfully in your possession or in the possession of another who's a member of your immediate family or household or of a person whose property he has a legal duty to protect. So if you have, you are caring for and you are responsible for some personal property and somebody is going to try to uh, um, uh, trespass and 
and take it away or, or whatever, then, okay, legal for... Forget it. Good luck with that. You're going to have to have the best lawyer in the world to get off if you shoot somebody over property. So um, that's about it for now, but just look at this, and, and you can look it up for yourself, 720 ILCS Article 7, which is justifiable use of force in Illinois. And again, we've got the letter of the law, which gives you a lot of latitude in when you shoot somebody to kill them. Uh, and then there's the actual practice of the law. Um, don't kill somebody over property. Okay, I'll see you next time.